Hey guys, it's Jordan with National Speed, and today we're showing you the effect that drag radials and tire pressure has on your chassis dyno numbers. And this topic comes up pretty regularly at our shops. The scenario goes where we have a customer who comes in for a scope of work with established outcomes, like with one of our packages. Let's say that this combination of parts with this car and a quality calibration is proven to deliver around 500 wheel horsepower. And so there's no reason to think that this car shouldn't do the same, right? Well, we notice one big variable. This car has drag radials. And believe it or not, this seemingly small change is a massive variable and presents a serious barrier to hitting that established 500 wheel horsepower outcome. But they're just tires, right? How could it be that big of a deal? Well, to answer that question, we need to first cover how an inertia chassis dyno works, such as our DynoJet 424XLC2. Well, to start, the dyno is a lot less intelligent than you might think. All it knows is the mass of its roller, the speed in which that roller is traveling, and the window in time between when the dyno operator hits the start and stop button. That's pretty much it. And without getting into all the nitty gritty details here, the dyno is simply calculating power based on the roller's change in acceleration during that window of time. To the dyno, the faster the roller is accelerating, the more power the engine is producing. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but for purposes of this video, that's as deep as we need to go. So why does this matter? Well, anything that inhibits that acceleration affects your reported power. And if you're watching this video, then chances are you've probably heard of drivetrain loss. And if you haven't, think of it as a tax on your power from the engine to the rear wheels. But one thing we harp on regularly is that you need to think of your tires as well as your tire pressure as part of that drivetrain. And more importantly, one of the greatest variables to your drivetrain loss. How so? Well, the tire's pressure, diameter, weight, carcass design, compound, and tread pattern all come into play here. And why does all of this matter? Well, in short, it's all about rolling resistance. And the best way I can explain this is with a relatable situation for any gearhead. Have you ever tried to push a car with flat tires and it almost felt immovable? but with the tires reinflated, the car felt almost effortless to push in comparison, that's rolling resistance. And when your tires have greater rolling resistance, more power is required to complete a revolution than with tires with less rolling resistance. It's the same reason your car will get worse fuel economy with lower tire pressure. And while aired down drag radials or slicks do a great job of increasing traction, a byproduct of this is increased rolling resistance. And if you're trying to hook, the upside of increased traction far outweighs the downside of increased rolling resistance. But on the dyno, this increased rolling resistance skews reported power figures, sometimes significantly. How significantly, you might be wondering? Well, let's find out with our test 2021 Ford Mustang GT. Up first, let's get a baseline with today's conditions with the stock wheels and the 25540ZR19 Pirelli P0 all-season tires. And it looks like our tire pressure is right at 31.6 PSI. <laughs> And our baseline run from six gear comes in at 459 wheel horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque. Up next, let's throw on the drag pack. The wheels are 17 by nine and a half Race Star 92 Drag Star, and the tires are 305-45 R17 Mickey Thompson ET Street SS. And while we have both off the car, let's get them weighed in and measured. Not surprisingly, the drag setup is around two and a half pounds heavier. This alone would have a nearly immeasurable impact on reported power, but it's an important variable to account for. And as you can see, the drag radial is a bit taller, coming in at just under 28 inches versus the stock tire at around 27 inches even. And with all factors the same, the taller tire would result in an increase in reported power, but there's a lot more at play here. And as you can see, the tread pattern and compound couldn't be more dissimilar between these two tires. And if you had to guess based on this alone, which do you think would take more effort to roll? Yep, the drag radial. Now with the drag radials installed, we get back on the dyno. And to start, we set tire pressure to where it would be for optimal traction with this setup, around 15 PSI. And with dynamic advance disabled, no change in calibration, and no hard part changes other than the wheels and tires, peak power drops to 412 wheel horsepower and 404 pound-feet of torque. That's a peak reported loss of an astonishing 46 wheel horsepower. So let's take a moment to unpack what's going on here. First, as we've discussed already, we have an increase in rolling resistance. But two, do you see how the losses increase proportionally at speed? Why is that? While drag radials don't grow like slicks do, they can change shape as speed increases due to centrifugal force. And the lower the tire pressure, the more pronounced this is. And since the car is strapped down firmly in place, the tire has nowhere to go. As a result, the tire begins to bunch up around the roller, which increases rolling resistance. And this is why loosening the dyno straps can reduce this effect, but that can get a little dicey. And guys, check this out. Absolutely fascinating. What you're looking at is wasted energy. 
Does this mean that the engine is physically making 46 horsepower less? Of course not. But with these factors in play, the engine's output can't overcome the rolling resistance to maintain the same rate of acceleration. Now to test at a more common and streetable pressure, we bump up to 23 PSI. This is around 9 PSI less than our stock tire pressure. All right, with that, reported power came up to 442 wheel horsepower and 409 pound-feet of torque. But compared to baseline, we're still down around 17 wheel horsepower. And now, the same shot. See how much less the sidewall is deforming? Less increase in rolling resistance, less wasted energy. Now, let's swing to the other end of the spectrum and see what 40 PSI does. This will not only naturally reduce rolling resistance, but will also nearly eliminate any tire deformation at speed. Well, that put us just to about our stock baseline. All right, now check this out. Practically no wasted energy in that sidewall now. And while we were able to get the reported power in line with the stock wheels and tires, it took an additional 8 PSI to offset the characteristics of the drag rating. And now back to our scenario from the beginning of the video. You can now see how this variable can introduce some serious confusion or frustration, if not properly accounted for. Everyone else does 500 wheel horsepower over this combination, why is my car only doing 470? And while it's natural to question the calibration right off the bat, there's only so much that can be done from the laptop, and sadly, addressing tire characteristics is not one of those things. So guys, that's all to say that if you're planning on hitting the dyno and want the most consistent numbers possible, take all of this into account. Ideally, use a normal street tire for the dyno session, or if you have to, adjust the pressure on your drag radials accordingly. Now that said, and I can't emphasize this enough, never exceed the tire's recommended pressure. A tire blowing out on the dyno will ruin everyone's day. And that all said, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned for more. And as always, if you have any questions at all, we're happy to chat. Thanks for watching.